One of the most impressive places to visit, not far from where I live, is Castle Howard. Still owned and run by the Howard family, it's open to the public to enjoy. The house is amazing, but today I'm here with Ian, to explore the grounds and take some autumnal photographs. Using my all-terrain power chair, I'm confident that I can get to most of the places I want to see. First stop, the Atlas Fountain. The huge figure of Atlas, the decorated basin, and the four tritons with their conch shells were carved out of Portland stone by the Victorian sculptor John Thomas. Weighing more than 20 tons, they were transported in sections by rail from London. The globe is made of copper with a gilded band showing the signs of the zodiac. Moving on, we head towards the house, which looks magnificent in the autumn sunlight. As my carer for the day, Ian was given a free ticket. Worth knowing if you are disabled and planning to visit. Castle Howard is a stately home, designed by John Vanborough and Nicholas Hawksmoor, and built between 1701 and 1811 in the English Baroque style. A large part of the house was destroyed by a fire which broke out on the 9th of November, 1940. The dome, the central hall, the dining room and the state rooms on the east side were entirely destroyed. Whilst many rooms and the central dome have been restored, much of the east wing remains a shell, although the roof has been replaced. Maintenance work is a huge ongoing task, and today, we can see that the window frames are being repainted. The painters are working from a platform on a huge elevated telescopic arm. We leave the house behind us, and head uphill towards the Temple of the Four Winds. As the hill rises, we are treated to views of the South Lake and across to the mausoleum in the distance. We also pass the very impressive statues that line the route up to the temple. As we continue along Temple Terrace, we see the Temple of the Four Winds come into view. Completed in 1738, it commands stunning views over the Howardian Hills. Originally used for refreshments and reading, it has a cellar below, where servants would prepare food to serve the family above. Today it stands empty. From here, we enter Raywood, an enchanting woodland garden, home to a collection of plants from all over the world. From spring to the end of autumn, Raywood is a stunning maze of colorful displays. My camera is working overtime, as I keep seeing autumn details I want to capture. Be sure to check out my still pictures at the end of this video. Thank you. 
Having spent a good hour exploring Raywood, it's time for a well-earned coffee break at the Lakeside Cafe. We pass through the entrance porch and continue outside to the rear terrace, which overlooks the Great Lake. Ian kindly moves some chairs so I can access one of the tables with a good view. Nice to see him taking his caring duties seriously. From there, we head up to take a look at the walled garden. Created in the 18th century as a kitchen garden, only a part is given over to vegetables these days. A large area has been transformed into a beautiful rose garden, dedicated to the memory of Lady Cecilia Howard. There is a lot to see, and we take our time touring each section. There are still many flowers to be seen as autumn remains quite warm so far. We leave the walled garden via the impressive gate in the eastern wall. Our final destination is a circuit of the South Lake, before we head for home. South Lake offers a great view of the house, and at the far end, of the mausoleum, the final resting place for generations of the Howard family. We've had a fantastic day here, and it's lifted my spirits a lot. Heading home now to sort through my pictures. I've created a gallery of my stills, which is coming up shortly. Hopefully, you've enjoyed coming along for the ride. Watch out for my next video. Take care and see you later.